Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? It's been a while since we've last checked out Free Geek, so let's see what's new. Free Geek is a nonprofit based in Portland, Oregon, and I visited the Minneapolis location. Its purpose is to take in donations of unwanted computers and electronics, refurbish the items that could still be of use to get them back into the community, and responsibly recycle the rest. A large portion of the work is performed by volunteers, some of whom are experts, and others who are there to learn. So I'm right at the entrance, and look at this stuff just right off the bat here. This is the biggest pile of older stereo equipment that I have seen them have. I've actually got a CD player very similar to this one. In fact, yeah, it's almost the exact same model. Dual cassette deck. I might make them an offer on that one, to be honest. Multi-disc CD changers, DVD players. Look at some of the... Just the variety of age of equipment is always something that kind of gets me too. You got something that's fairly new and then stuff that's just much, much older, you know, from the 80s. I've seen stuff from the 70s. This is one of those portable video cassette decks, if you remember back in the early days of, instead of having the, the actual tape mechanism inside the camcorder, you'd hook it up to, uh, to something like this and then this would have a battery in it. Then you can see it's got these posts on the side. You'd have a shoulder strap, you'd sling this beast over your shoulder and uh, and carry it around so it can record. See, there's the uh, the connectors that the camera would hook up to. Haven't seen one of these in a while. This is all fairly newer stuff. You'll notice that there's a lack of turntables. Uh, my understanding, at least from the last time that I've been out here and talked with them, is the turntables obviously are going to be in high demand. You know, that's a very popular format these days. So they've got a couple of shops nearby that they've kind of got a standing standing relationship with where if turntables come in, these shops will buy them off them, um, like right away. The cartridges, the multi-changer. So this is one of those six-disc changers that you have to load all your CDs in and... That's nice, whoever brought this one in included all the changer cartridges. Be kind, please rewind. So here's their kind of recycling, the loading dock area where stuff goes out. This is all stuff that's destined to head out. This room just changes on a daily basis. Something that caught my eye when I first wandered through here. Check out these old iMacs. Graphite, I think that one's a blueberry. This green one has my eye. Uh, the bummer is that they're all broken. See, here's parts from one. Um, they've all got some sort of problem or another, so uh, I don't know if I would take them home. You know, people look at stuff like this or, you know, this CRT monitor, which I'm told is actually a pretty nice unit. And everyone would kind of freak out. Oh my God, they're throwing away all that stuff. Well, here's the problem. It's broken. These are all broken in one way or another. This monitor was broken, which is why they cut the, the video cable off. You look at these, we've got big flat screen monitors. They're all dead or broken in some way that isn't really worth repairing, which kind of sucks. I mean, the, the economy of this whole thing, you know, you would look at some of this, you'd look at you know, something like these CRTs, these TVs back here. Oh my God, these would be great for retro gaming. Yeah, maybe, except they don't work. And as much as people want this kind of stuff, what I'm told is, at least in the Minneapolis metro area where I am, we've kind of reached the saturation level with this stuff, where... If you're going to look for a CRT to play video games on, you're going to want the best one you can possibly get. And you're going to want one that works. And in this case, these are all scrap CRTs that don't work and aren't really economically repairable. And it kind of sucks, but it, there, there's got to be a balance, I think. And so 
that's what Free Geek's trying to do here. When they take stuff apart, because that's how they make some of their money, they are a non-profit, but you know, to keep the lights on, pay their rent, is all the, the e-waste that comes in, they, they disassemble and send off to recyclers for you know, a certain amount of money per pound of whatever type of material it is. Um, I think they said they actually have to pay for CRTs to go out. So it's actually not even free for them to get rid of CRTs working or not. But just because something isn't modern doesn't mean it's destined for the recycling pile. Free Geek staff and volunteers keep an eye out for tech that could be of interest to retro collectors. Some items get sold in the thrift shop and others are kept on display for visitors. Here's the thrift store area. All sorts of random odds and ends. I can't remember the last time I've seen so many trackballs in one spot. It's kind of a mix of random cables and adapters and such if you need various types of video cables. An entire bin full of miscellaneous calculators. Something that I'm told is new is this case is now full of video gaming stuff. Apparently video gaming stuff doesn't come in terribly often, but it does show up. PlayStation and Wii. The one thing you'll notice is that pretty much everything is going to be a few years old. And there's obvious reason for that. It's because, you know, if you've got a place that's based on donations of items, you're not going to have people bringing in the latest and greatest, you know, to get rid of it. Why would anyone do that? So most stuff is a few years old, but if you're into retro anything, I mean, any, any sort of retro tech, or you need parts for retro tech, random adapters and such, then they're a really good resource for it. More USB chargers than anyone probably needs. And you can get some esoteric stuff too, like, actually that's kind of esoteric right there. It's your standard Apple power brick, but it's the Firewire version for the old iPods. And then if you've got retro computing that needs to get fixed up, they've got a decent amount of parts for that too. I mean, obviously they've got old computers, like full old computers coming in all the time. But even if you just need a part or two to get stuff working, old school video cards, look at these with the TV tuners. I remember back in the late 90s, the uh, ATI All-In Wonder. Actually, I think that's what some of these might be. Um, the ATI All-in-Wonder cards were very popular. Whereas a video card with the tuner built in, video capture. A few wireless routers, but not too many. Those tend to stay valid for longer than the computers themselves, it seems. And then hard drives. If you have an old computer and you need a hard drive for it. SATA drives, and then this is what I really like to see, they keep some PADA drives. Um, obviously, they're not going to have too many mach full machines that they sell that still use PADA drives. They're a little bit lower than kind of their cutoff, but it's nice to see that they include the drives. And what's nice is all these drives have been tested. They're not just random drives they've pulled out of a thing and then turfed in the bin. All of these have been wiped and tested. See, D-band pass on all of them. Um, and sometimes they even have the smaller laptop drives, too. Something that's quite a bit different this time than the last time I was in is they're very short on laptops. Um, normally this entire shelf all through the corner is full of laptops. Apparently they've been going very quickly, um, which, you know, people, more and more people want laptops. This is the only one they've actually got out right now, this HP. 840G1, that's actually not too old. It's got a solid state drive in it. Pretty decent specs. If you need a machine, and then you'll notice it's running Zubuntu. They are really interested in the whole open source thing. It gets them out of all sorts of liability with trying to run Windows on machines. A couple of older iMacs. This room is just full of towers. And this is inventory that changes actually quite a bit as well. Um, they get machines from various places, either individual people dropping one off, or like you can see, a whole bunch of identical machines, businesses, will often drop off old machines. Um, and I believe there's some sort of tax 
incentive for them to do so. And then FreeGeek will either sell the individual machines, you know, like you can see some of these. We've got the specs and all the, the capabilities, all sorts of form factors and, and whatnot. But they do have kind of a limited a limited, you know, like bottom end to the spec. Most of these are going to be at least dual core, a couple of gigs of byte, couple of gigs of RAM, like an 80 gig hard drive at least. Various makes and models, though, you can see all sorts of, you know, kind of name brand ones, HPs and Dells, some Lenovo, and then also just kind of homebrew machines or one-offs, uh, Core 2 Quad. This would actually be kind of fun for a Windows XP type of rig if you wanted to get into that. So the other thing that happens to a lot of the computers that come in and get fixed up, and all these get fixed up and, and, and test and whatnot, is they'll send some out to nonprofits. So if you're a nonprofit org, you know, if you if you need to get a computer or multiple computers and you kind of ask them, they'll, they'll hook you up. Same thing with the volunteers. Um, if you volunteer here and put in so many hours, um, after you've reached that threshold, they'll basically give you a computer. So that's how a lot of the, the community, you know, if you're low income or underprivileged or whatever and you need a computer, you don't have the money, even though the prices are, I mean, pretty fair, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. Even if you don't have that, um, you, you volunteer a certain number of hours and they'll they'll hook you up. So here's their intake. Um, I think they'll admit it's a little bit of a mess, but that's kind of the way it is when you just get lots of stuff in. In a hurry. And it's just a wide variety of things. Like, look, here's a not even all that old Cisco IP phone. Various AV equipment, satellite TV receivers, some karaoke stuff. Here's what I was saying with the turntables. They do get turntables, but they disappear quickly. Musical keyboards. Dust buster. Some big speakers. It's just everything. It's different every time. Laptop docking stations. Scanners. Another bin of laptops. Phones, mobile devices. Look at that beast. Aerial, God, they haven't been around in a long time. And mobile devices obviously are going to become a big thing too, and they start to see more and more of them. Obviously, they go very quickly as well, but more of the iPads and smartphones and everything. But And the variety of tech is just astounding. It's another receiver. Check out this old scope. Somebody donated. So I'm in the back, and this is where all of the machines that need to get worked on end up. So the workflow is they kind of come through intake, and then their hard drives get taken out, and I'll show you that cage in a moment. But then these are all the machines that need work. They need to have their hardware tested, they need to have a drive put back in them, they need an operating system loaded on them, all that. You can see an obvious just wide variety of machines. I remember this case. Anybody else remember this case? With the weird translucent blue swirl thing, late 90s? The, when the PC industry started trying to copy off of Apple and the iMac design. And then here's where the drives get wiped. So when computers get donated, the first thing they do is they rip the drive out and they wipe it. Laptops that need to get done, and then they've got this big rig and they run D-Band to, to wipe the drives thoroughly. And obviously it'll fail out all the rejects so that they'll only end up with good working drives. Anything that fails the D-band test where the drive itself is physically bad, obviously they're not just gonna throw that straight in the garbage, there's, there's still data on there. And if you wanna see what happens with those drives, go watch the documentary. <laughs> I almost missed the Apple X SAN. This is Apple's kind of raid array setup. No drives, of course, but you could get multiples of these and hook them up to other Mac systems. They actually sold rack-based Macs called the XServe that would kind of go with this. So this would be your bulk storage, and then the other servers would be 
for the you know the horsepower of it. I haven't seen one of these in a very long time. Cool to see that come in. Here's their uh, so-called Mac room. You can see lots of aluminum in here. <laughs> Wide variety of machines. Mostly newer these days. Well, at least what I'm showing you so far. Got a nice tech bench set up here for doing all the Mac work. This is new from the last time I was here. This is really nice to have. It's my pads and such. And this is kind of where the technology is heading for them as well. Not just towers, but also mobile devices. People want phones. People want tablets. Various years of iMac, various sizes of iMacs. Decent number of Mac Pro towers. A couple down here as well. And then here's some of the stuff that makes me interested. The classic Macs. Oh my god, they've got two SC30s. All sorts of accessories, keyboards, cards. They've got a whole bin here full, speaking of tablets, a whole bin full of broken iPads. But you know what, some of those may not need a whole lot of work to get going again, you know? So maybe one of those deals where you take a few of them, put the pieces together, and you end up with a working unit. That could be a PowerBook 5300. There's a PowerBook Duo, 1400. A couple of MacBook Airs, even. So you can definitely tell things have been trending newer, as of course they would be, but the other big question is how repairable is a lot of this? I mean, we all know Apple's been becoming less and less repair-friendly as time has gone on, so... It may be one of those deals where it's like, yeah, they're getting in all sorts of stuff. A couple of G4 iMacs. But, you know, how much of it can actually be repaired versus just scrapped out? It's kind of sad, but at the same time, even if they can get some of it fixed up, then it's worth it, right? Here's a rarity for me. This is the last gen of Power Mac G4 Tower. I've never seen one with the zip drive. I've always seen it with the two. They call this the mirror di drive door model because it's got like it's a mirror. Um, I've only ever seen it with the two where you can have the optical drives because the top one is for the optical and then you can get a second optical in the bottom bay. I've never seen it with the zip drive. Old XM radio. Can't say I've ever seen a purple CD player before. Digital camera. That one's actually in really good shape. It's for radio. When was the last time you just saw a radio? So they do have a free shelf as well for stuff that isn't really... It could be useful to somebody, but not really worth throwing out for them. Obviously books, and then kind of miscellaneous stuff. If you need some floppy disks, they've got tons of those. Um, this is kind of cool. They've got these bags of just like random parts, like switches, various just mixed components from stuff that's come in. Um, the Andy Griffith show, I guess if you want free Andy Griffith. Cable and stuff. And then they've got these monitors as well. Basically what they tell me is any of the kind of like four by three aspect ratio monitors, the flat panels, They'll give those away for free. If you want one, you can have it. They're not very, yeah, there you go, You're adding more to the pile. Not very much in demand, but it could be useful for something if you're running a small home network and you want something for your server or whatever, just as monitoring, a couple of speakers. This is actually the only thing that I really came out here for. You'll see a video about what this hooks up to probably soon enough, but... I knew they'd have it. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that one. Quick little walk around, not so quick, walk around Free Geek and just all the stuff they've got. They get new things on all the time. Something that's really important that I should note is officially only the stuff in that thrift store is what's available for sale. There is a lot of other stuff back in like the recycle rooms and the tech rooms and whatnot. They tell me to ask you if there is something that is of interest to you that you're looking for that isn't out on the floor of the the thrift store area 
ask them first. Don't just wander around in the back. That's for volunteers trying to do work only. And this is probably the same thing at other free geek or these kind of recycling places as well is don't just go wandering around and like trying to make offers on stuff that's not very nice. Talk to the staff. They're happy to help you. They're happy to help you find what you're looking for because they're geeks just like you are. But anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate it. Thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.